Hello and welcome back to Wild Sun Art Studio. My name is Robin Sun. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share this video if you like it. Well, I took a little space here because I was working very hard on um, the 100 day project and some of the, I, I traced my hand for a hundred days and um, made various kinds of art in various kinds of mixed media um, with the pattern of my hand. And that was really fun. And it was also, it kind of took up a lot of, I don't know why, my brain space. And I um, ended up stopping making videos for a little while so that I could um, sometimes spend up to like four or five hours a day working on various hand projects. And one of the things that I learned in that time about myself as an artist is that I really love to sew and I don't sew as much as I love it. So, so I am um, making a commitment to myself to make at least one video a week that has something to do with sewing so that I keep myself steeped in sewing projects. If you're a real sewer, you probably noticed that this thread is ridiculously long. Don't hate me. Um, it's just the way it's going today. Um, so, this is, I wanted to make a cloth. This was one of the things I did in the 100 day projects was I made a cloth that was, that was thick with um, multiple colors and zillions of stitches. And what I discovered was the herringbone stitch. And maybe it would make some sense to um, draw this out for you. Oops. Rolling thimble. So you come up at one point. Let's use an even thicker pen. You come up at one point from the back um, and you kind of make the beginning of a cross stitch and you go in and you come out. Now I'm right handed so just flip all of this for ease. For a left hander you would start over here and sew in that direction if you're left handed and your stitches would go anyway flip this if you're left-handed. Um, but I um, come up and go back in at a, at a sort of cross stitch kind of dimension. Now there are a couple of ways to make a herringbone stitch. You can make it very even so all the tops are in a line and all the bottoms are in a line or you can make crazy stitches. So I'm going to call, show you crazy stitch um, because that's what I'm doing in this piece over there. So you come up and you go down and you come up here. So for a right hander, I'm sewing kind of backwards, but, but in a way that's comfortable to my right handedness. So I come up and I more or less finish the cross stitch. But when I go in here, I come up here and do another cross and come up and finish that. And then I go in and out and 
you can make nice little stitches. And so my pen is running out of ink, but you get the idea. So all of these tops could line up or you can make them crazy. And I'm making in this project very crazy stitches. But the uh, one of the wonderful things about a herringbone stitch and <coughs> with excuse me, um with the idea that I want to put as much of the thread on the top to cover this space is that very little of the stitch ends up just these little dashed lines ends up on the back. So I'm not wasting, if you do an old fashioned satin stitch where you're going around, half the thread is on the back of the piece. And this is a great stitch for uh, covering um, the front and not so much with the back. So I'm going to continue this line across. My goal is that this is going to be a couple of days worth of stitching. And I mostly don't want to see the white in the background. I, I want it much closer to this. And um, actually, let's bring you in. bit. So I go in and come out and I'm actually going to want this thread over there. So yeah, a couple of days of stitching, cover as much of the space um, yeah, you want to keep the thread over there. And um, one idea I had for this is I've been making some journals and testing out the theory that I can, and this is why I've used, by the way, this is white felt. Um, and the reason I'm using white is I think I'm going to take, I want to try a couple of different ways of stitching on the felt and then put it in a photocopier and copy it and see how it comes out as background paper for journals, making like a junk journal. Only it wouldn't be a junk journal. It would be a, I worked hard on this journal. Um, I am wearing a thimble on my finger. Um, this is actually a pretty easy stitch and for a while I was not using a thimble. Oh, unknot yourself, thank you. Um, and you don't really, there isn't an awful lot of tugging. Um, it's not, it's not hard to get through the fabric. So a thimble is not um, necessary if you don't like thimbles. Um, I was just getting to the point where I was doing so many stitches that um, my pushing finger, my middle finger, was just getting a little weary. So, this is life inside my curious artist brain. And I sit around and I wonder about, can I stitch? And um, 
make an interesting pattern for paper. Yeah, it's a little crazy. And yes, this is not the shape of a real paper. Um, you know, like real office paper is supposed to be long and short, long one way and short the other way. Um, and I started this project and it was pretty late last night and I don't know why I was too lazy or something to go back and cut another piece of felt. So I think what I'm going to do is um, end up cropping this on the photocopier and making it um, enlarging it a little so it's eight and a half by eleven. And these are already pretty big stitches, so I don't know. I may not have made the smartest move there, but I was just eager to see what this looked like. And a little shout out to Miss Amy Hand at the Camden Library. She, I gave her a little gift folio a while back and um, she asked permission to make a video and of course I said yes of course um, so that just came out recently and um, it's a really cute video of um, a project that's really fun. It's basically just a piece of cardstock folded in half and then you get to decide if you want to put a pocket here or a little add-on tip-in notebook there or put little medallions and stickers and uh, all kinds of stuff um, over there. Yeah, so you just take a piece of card stock and fold it in half in the size of your delight. And um, yeah, so that was fun. And even though I had made it for her, I had, um, when I was watching the video, I ended up making another one, at least one. I might have made two. Um, yeah, because they're just really fun to make and they're pretty flat and so you can tuck them into an art journal or a junk journal um, and, uh, you know, just as a special treat inside a pocket here or there. Um, so I'm going to finish up this thread and I'll show you how I end the thread on the back and I'm not knotting it. I am not N-O-T. Knotting it. K-N-O-T. Um, because this piece is not going to get a lot of wear and tear and I just don't think I needed to uh, spend the time or the thread in knotting. So I make the last stitch at some point in here. There. So I'm going to go in. <clears throat> and then on the back, I am going to, and you can do this with felt kind of just weave there we are um, weave in and out and pull through and let that little tag just dangle so here we go 
and as I'm sewing I'm realizing that I am pulling the stitches a tiny bit tight if you wanted to do a project like this and put it in some kind of a hoop or a frame, that would make sense. Um, yeah, so I have a lot of stitching to go. You can see a lot of white in various places. So I wish for you the, the delight of knowing your own heart and me knowing my own heart another thing that's fun is painting and you can see blue paint on my fingers um yeah so i wish you the delight of knowing where your heart is and what's fun for you and um i wish you the courage to go out and do that thing Have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.